today we we talk about data strategy i will so data so, strategy uh, is a topic that actually is very relevant i found myself that you know talking a lot about digital strategy a while ago and that in the during the last one year uh, all the CEO, they start to tell me, no, no, I, I'm not interested in digital strategy. I'm interested in the data strategy. And everyone whose name was chief digital officer, they changed their name into chief data officer. I haven't changed mine though, because I'm a little bit traditional sometimes. So I keep it chief digital officer. But as a matter of fact, you know, apart from jokes, data is uh, becoming uh, uh, extremely relevant. Actually, is the data what is at the center of uh, of a digital transformation. So uh, we had a brief introduction before, but let me again uh, introduce a bit of myself. Uh, so I am currently a trainer of AI and intelligence automation for PwC. I have a contract with them, so I train uh, other executives on uh, artificial intelligence and in general, whatever is connected to the automation. This is the topic that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I am also a partner of Etisalat. You may know this brand is a, is a UAE company, it's a telco and has operation across the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, they also have, I think, operation in Pakistan. They, have, they, they don't have operation in India because they say that the market is too competitive there. <laughs> but it is, it's, a, it's a large organization and I help them uh, to uh, create and sell a digital solution. You know that now uh, telco market is, you know, uh, pretty competitive, stagnant. So operators, they find a new uh, source of revenue stream. So I'm happy with that. And in 2019, I was also partnering with the Forbes in the United States uh, for co-creating a, a, a product for regeneration using artificial intelligence. And before, this is what brought me uh, in this region of the world. I was in charge of digital transformation for Do. And when I was much younger, unfortunately, I, uh, I mean, grew up in Accenture as a manager. So this is a pretty much a bit about me and my experience. Now let's, let's go into, uh, deep into the presentation. <clears throat> so, Actually, why data is so important? No, now everyone is talking about data. And the real reason is, bottom line, data bring you more money. At the end, I mean, money is not the only thing important in life, but it's very important, especially if you are a company. So why data is so important? Actually, data could bring a big amount of money. We have, uh, I mean, there is a research from the Melbourne Business School that is clearly showing that if you are a leader, okay, compared to being a leader, laggards in uh, data analytics, this could bring you up to 83% more profit. So actually, data is a big, big source of revenue. And that's why now many more companies are interested in understanding how they can use, how they can exploit those data. So data is, data is very important, but we can see that the reality, at least among my clients, is that data still don't really know how to use it. Okay, so many companies don't know how to use this data. And the, the bigger problem is that their employees are really overwhelmed. So when we, when we think about data, mo most of the time, we all hear the stuff happening, you know, with the, the employees in the company. I'm not sure I have the right data. You know, this data cannot be matched with the other. I bought the tool, uh, but now I don't know how to use the analytics. There is really a lot of confusion no, around, around uh, data. So corporations don't really know how to use it because they, their employees don't know how to use it. So what are the reasons why then uh, the organization has, are really failing at using the data, at creating a data strategy? <clears throat> Based on our understanding, we believe that the real reason are three. So the first reason is that there is a lack of digital culture. So uh, according to PwC, 75% uh, of data initiative, they actually fail because of this reason. Lack of digital culture means that, for example, the management think that to have data about their customer is not important or people don't really know 
what they could do with this data. So that is, it's not part of their culture. Uh, the second one, the second reason is of course that they, there is no strategy. So okay, even if I would have a lot of this data, what do I what do I do with this data? Could I monetize this data? What is the benefit that I get from this data? There is no strategy, so there is confusion. And the third part uh, that is uh, somehow connected with the first part is that there is no skill. So I actually speak myself with a lot of uh, people who uh, they, they are, you know, a bit older than me and they were head of IT. And many of them, they said, okay, one, one day I was head of IT, the next day I was chief digital officer. But as a matter of fact, many of those people don't really understand, don't have those skills. And, and sometimes this happens even with the younger generation. I am a trainer. And I can tell you that even in a, in a country like Dubai, 95% of the marketers don't really know how to use data in marketing. This is really shocking. But this is the reality. So how does organization with those marketers who don't know how to use data, they could succeed to create a data strategy? It's actually a big problem. But it's not something impossible. So there is a solution on how to create a digital culture, how to develop the strategy, and actually how to foster those skills. And this is what we're gonna see today. So before going into the, uh, the detail of what are the steps that you need to have in place in order to execute the data strategy, let me give you an idea of the kind of project that uh, you can do around data strategy. So these are few of the projects that I have done over the last three years. So some of them, they may be familiar with those guys. I actually have implemented a, a digital assistant for HR for the, their 14,000 employees across 140 different countries. So it's a basically a tool that uh, uses artificial intelligence to uh, communicate with all the employees and to generate uh, data coming from the employees to understand the uh, feeling of the employee and their emotion and also to help employee to re retrieve the data that are, that are normally stored in a silo system, like for example, uh, policies or for example, other data that are typically stored in the HR system. And other projects, including IBM in New York, with this a lot, uh, then a data strategy for telecommunication authority of the UAE, data science platform, this is the road and transport authority of the, of the UAE. So those are all prominent organizations that testify not only that I actually did those projects, but actually that the great part is that those organizations, they are investing a lot of their effort and money into data. So what is the framework of a data strategy? Yeah, we, we can have 1,000 elements, but at the end, if we want to you know, keep uh, focus on the main building blocks of a data strategy, a typical framework is based on those four elements. Uh, where we believe that the real tech part, the complex part, this part data ecosystem is only one of the components. If you see, there is other three components, which is a talent and skill, and we see that some of you, they have actually experience in, a, in, a, in HR. Culture and governance. So how we can actually uh, use and process those uh, data. And strategy and leadership. So do you have a strategy in place? Is uh, the leadership of the company uh, uh, ready to execute a data strategy or not? So let's look at these four steps. So how we can actually conduct a data strategy, how we can create. We, we try to keep it simple so that everyone could understand those building blocks. So the first, the first elements, these are the same elements, by the way, of the framework here before. The first elements is actually the strategy and leadership. Because when we, when we come up with the data strategy, last week I was speaking with the chief digital officer of Coca-Cola here uh, in Dubai. So, and they are interested about doing a data strategy, but you can't start a data strategy if you really don't have a very clear what are your objectives. So what do you want to do with this data strategy? Uh, how do you measure the success of this initiative? What are the key elements? What you can measure? What influence those elements? 
what you are currently uh, measuring right now. And then if you, have, if the, you were measuring some elements, some other that you were not measuring, why you were not measuring them? So this is a typi this typically happen with the one, two session that we normally do with the senior business leaders. So it, it all starts there. If we don't have this part clear, then the rest of the project cannot happen at all. So that is, a, that is a really the, the foundation of a, of a data strategy. The second part is the data ecosystem. So the data ecosystem, these are sessions that are typically carried on with marketing and the IT professional within the company. So this is a part that is more technical. So it's not really with the senior business leader, but it's with the operating people. And here is the part where we actually are going to look at what are the data sets that are missing? If you are, are you capturing those kind of data? Uh, where are you supposed to receive this data? Where these data are stored? How frequently they are used? Who is responsible for that? In general, a large organization, for example, I, I work a lot with the, uh, with the food and beverage hospitality. Some of them, I understand, some of you, they also work in this industry. So a tourist, when reach an hotel, it, it leaves a, lo a, lar a large amount of data, whatever it does. When he calls the call center, when he, when, he, when he has a problem, when he's on the beach and he's ordering something. These are all data and they are scattered everywhere within the hotel. Some of them, I think they are even not stored, not recorded at all. If you record this data, you can, of course, measure a lot of actions. For example, you can understand that, you can understand that I am Italian. I am not the guy that at 3 p.m. Uh, uh, you know, go somewhere and want to drink a beer at 3 p.m. It's not my thing. I am the person that at 7 p.m. go for aperitivo and have a glass of wine on the beach. But there are other people, other nationalities, other kind of customers who really love to have their, their, uh, their beer in the, in the early afternoon. So those amount of data that you could capture could really enable you to, uh, to improve your customer experience. Because then if you, de if you deliver the wrong message to the wrong guy, if you call me and, uh, while, at 3 p.m. while I'm sleeping because I'm Italian, I do siesta, and you call me or you send me a message asking to have a beer, I would be annoyed, right? So all those data, they could actually enable uh, an improvement in terms of uh, customer experience. So when you have done all this part where you understand the data that you need, what you can do with those data sets, then you are ready for the, for the next step. The next step is about culture and governance. So what typically happens? Here I've done an example. So you may have a macro governance of those data. Are you, how, who is in charge of those data? Who use them? Who can analyze? Okay. But then it's not only about that. This, are, this is a very high level. You have to go deep into the level of details. And these are real actual uh, processes that I do for capturing and maneuvering data within my company. Uh, so you have to establish all the different uh, processes to capture those data. So for example, you may have one process to capture data when uh, the, let's go back to the hotel. When, the, when a new guest reached the hotel, you may have a, a certain kind of process to capture this data when the person is checking, right? And then you may have instead other kind of process to, me to measure and to process data that are uh, instead being created in a different uh, elements, in different parts of the journey of the guest. So all, the, all those processes together, you know that s where some data are generated, who is actually uh, uh, controlling those data, who own this data. So that is all the part about the process. That is very extremely relevant. Otherwise, if you have created the data, in the, if you have done the part of the data ecosystem, but you have not process, you don't have a, a, a process for those data, then these data are not, you, you cannot use it. So who is gonna then consume those data? And then there is the last part, which is about talent and skills. So once you have uh, the data ecosystem, you have understand what are the processes, then you need to understand what are your gaps in terms of 
the people needed to carry on those kind of projects. So depending on the kind of data that you have to analyze, who are the kind of people? So if you are looking at the data that look at the past, okay, maybe you may have a big data engineer, you may need a developer, right? But if you want to, to use this data to create prediction, then in that case, you need a data scientist. Then some of those data, for example, they, they happen in, the, in almost the physical world. So they are not really web related. But then a lot of other data, they happen in the, they, they happen in the web. Maybe going back to the example of the guest reaching the hotel, some data they are generated before the person reached the hotel. So Raffaele is searching and browsing regarding this hotel on the web. Maybe he has downloaded a, a video right regarding that hotel. Maybe he was a follower of that hotel brand before. These are all data that are captured before. So if you have a data scientist, but you don't have a digital marketer who know where this data are generated, then you're gonna fail. Why? Because the data scientist, yes, can create the, the algorithm, but don't know where these data are and how these data they could be captured. So when it comes to data, you really have a lot of different people with different skills that they all have to work together. And this is really the secret recipe for success. If you've done those three and you miss this part of talent and skill, then you're basically gonna fail with your, uh, with your data strategy. And that's it. So this is my personal uh, take. Uh, I think someone before I found out I was a bit annoyed, he also used a similar one. But what I wanna say here is that actually when it comes to data and AI, it's not really the artificial intelligence that will take your job. It's actually the manager who know how to use those data and AI who will, have, who will eventually take your job. Uh, this is a, uh, these are few references about me. Uh, you can uh, schedule a, a calendar meeting with me. I'm available uh, to have a chat with you after that. I think that you are all awesome uh, people with awesome stories and companies. So if we have the chance to interact, partner, work together, I'd be very glad about that. And my mail is also raffaele at ESD dot, uh, uh, dot middle east. So if you want to reach out with me on email and uh, I'm really, really happy to do that. That is from my side, uh, Sampat. Hello? Sam, mic off. Sam, mic off. Mic off. Mute, Sam, you're on mute. Abhijit, you had a question, no? I have typed it out. You want me to? Yeah, just read it out. Spell it out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Rafael, I had a question okay. that if you're a technology driven startup with a uh, you know, fair amount of automation planned, then what kind of process and system should be adopted to ensure data brings more money? Right from the beginning, what kind of process and system should you adopt for a tech-driven startup? Uh, is, is, this a, is this a specifically related to a startup? Yes. Okay, this is actually a good question and I like startups. Uh, I believe that the biggest challenge for a startup, my personal understanding is I also have, uh, beside my consulting business, I also recently launched a startup. I think the, the biggest, uh, um, I mean, the most important process at the beginning is uh, visibility. So many, many startup visibility. I've seen a lot of startup with a great product, great people, they do great stuff, but let's be honest, people don't know about it. And startup don't really have thousands of dollars to, uh, you know, have a very expensive a digital agency who would come and charge $10,000 every month, big budget on Facebook and whatever it is. So you really have to be extremely, extremely smart huh, to uh, uh, develop strategies that could use data and could do automation. So that, that part of data, actually, it's a lot uh, regarding sales and marketing. I could give you an example. I, 
do I still can I still share my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Can I right? So just want to give you an example. Like this is my little secret. But for example, uh, very recently I have done a post on LinkedIn. You know, I can show you. Uh, This is a post that I recently done. Okay, so this was a post that I done on LinkedIn recently. Yeah, it was one week ago about data strategy because I actually, uh, I mean, do data strategy. So uh, I am communicating what I'm doing, why is it a strategy, why you need that, et cetera, et cetera. And then what did I do? is that I'm using a tool, okay? So first of all, it was quite a good engagement, 10,000 views, 74 comments, etc. I have a tool that helped me, okay, understand who are the people that have eventually, uh, who, have, who are the people that have eventually engaged with this post. So I can search who are those people who have engaged with my post, Okay, actually it's 95 people. So 95 people have engaged with my post. These are all these people. And then I can run a campaign to all these people and I can say, okay, if you are not connected to me or even if you are connected with me, okay, I can send you some messages and I can say, oh, do you, you did enjoy my post. Do you want to have my deck regarding a data strategy? What is your favorite email? I get the email. I use another tool that is taking this information, doing a text parsing and capturing from this message, the email that the LinkedIn user has sent me. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually texting you. I said, do you want it? And you can tell me, and I can show you the example, right? Some people, they said me, they told me, yes. Oh yes, I want, yes, please. Oh, this is my email. And then automatically, I take this information through a web book, I parse, I take the email, and I can generate a lead in my CRM. I put a lead in my CRM, and then from my CRM, I can start a sales sequence of email that I'm sending, okay? And then after I send all this email, I can see who is reading and who is opening this email. This is all automation. So as a startup, if I, if I don't know how to do that, and if I want to employ a team of people doing this, how much this would cost me? Probably I have to employ two, three, two three employees, right? Control them, see what they do. Sometimes they're lazy or they don't come or they don't like or they're bored, right? So actually, if you can see that even for a small company, for a startup to have this kind of data and automation in place can really make a difference. What sometimes I notice is that even people who are very technical developers, they completely ignore all this part, all the part of communication, all the part of capturing data, maneuvering data, integrating tools together to create automation in the sales and marketing space. Wow, wonderful. Thank uh, you so much for that. Interview. You like it? How much, uh, lovely. Uh, how much would these uh, services cost? Like uh, Not like much, not much. For example, this, is a, hmm. this CRM is called the Fresh Sales. I think okay. the founder is Indian, by the way, oh, uh, as <laughs> most of the software. And okay. I, this is a, the CRM that I prefer, Fresh Sales. I've used Zoho in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you probably know it's more famous, but I, I think that they really have a, a serious issue with the quality. They grew too bigger with too many things together. Nice it's almost like. impossible and a lot of bugs. So this one is $50 per, per, per employee. Uh, this tool is called Expandi.io. It's $80 for one account and that's it. Sometimes I use also mailing system. Sending blue is one great system to send email and up to 300 email per day is free. It's like MailChimp, but free. I mean, for up to 300 per day. You see, free plan up to 300 mail. So this, sometimes instead of sending to LinkedIn, I can send directly the email. This is another tool that I use. So when I send you an email, 
and uh, you click on that email, okay? So if I send you an email and you click on that email, mm -hmm. uh, what happens is that instead of providing the document in attachment, I provide you a link. You know, you click a link, right? So when you are clicking that link, what happens is that when you click that link, this is the link, right? Mm -hmm. So th this link that I'm when you click that link, I can tag, uh, I can tag you with Google and with Facebook, and you will keep having my advertisement. So imagine that I want to send you an offer because I want to sell you a data strategy, right? So I send you an email. Then what happened? You got busy. Your wife make you busy. Your son make you busy. You forget about me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, in the real estate business, typically what happened? I will start to WhatsApp you every day till you block my number. Sorry for the guys who work in real estate, but this is true. <laughs> so how is it how is it a way that I can do it? I can send you a document and because I'm tagging you, what happens is that you will receive a trail of email, very polite, every one week, giving you some value, some information. And through these things called the Facebook Pixel, you, you go on Facebook and you see my face. Raffaele, ESD, data strategy. So what Apple? I am constantly remember you that Raffaele or the startup Raffaele or your startup exists. And in the next two months, when is the right time that you really wanted to have that service, I really come at your hand because you know, you have seen myself so many different times that then you are ready to buy. So this is the kind of how uh, sales and marketing is really done in 2020. So this is how the top are doing sales and digital marketing. But I could tell you that most of my students, 95%, don't know about that. When I, when I show them this, they all, oh, wow. You know, I, I never heard. I said, come on, guys, you are in marketing. You are young. You are a kid. You are 25. You should teach me. I'm, I'm 40. At the end of the day, when you do all those kind of activities, you could really be uh, ahead of 99% of all the other startup and companies who are not doing that. So this is, this is a kind of things that we teach. Excellent. And this is all web analytics, data mm -hmm. analytics generated on the web. Then and once you bring the, Yes, exactly, remarketing, exactly. Facebook. But I can tell you that many, many data scientists don't know about that. So this is about generating data from the web. And then once, one, once this data come in our platform, in our customer data platform, together with other kind of data, maybe coming from other sources, credit card data, other data, then we can develop our beautiful algorithm. But if you don't even know that those kind of possibilities exist on the web, you are missing a big part of data. How you can develop a data strategy if you miss part of the data? Right. Thank you. Uh, one second. Huh? So we have. Uh, Vinit has got a question. Vinit. Yeah, uh, Rafael. Actually, I took a permission from Sam because this question is related to uh, uh, one counseling. Uh, so I'm doing data scientist role, uh, data scientist course right now. So where there is a specialization which I have to choose after uh, two months uh, among AI and NLP. Okay. So I have experience of 11 years in operations and product development in education sector. So I am confused which to choose, whether I, to, I should go for AI or I should go for NLP. When you say AI, what do you exactly mean by AI? AI, whatever I know about AI, it's like uh, 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 not great. Actually, ML I know, it's like machine learning itself and uh, doing coding. AI maybe uh, there are a few codes uh, which uh, uh, take data automatic automatically. Yes, yeah. No, to, to to be honest, NLP is a very very uh, narrow category. Uh, you 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 don't need to be an NLP expert to, to do a, a project with chatbot. I've done a project with chatbot for the executive council of the UAE uh, for VFS Global all around the world, and trust me. I, I have an understanding of NLP of what I can use it about NLP. So you use IBM Watson, you can use Google. You need to understand the broad concept. What is an intent? What is an entity? 
you can grasp those concepts already probably no if you're thinking about nlp but uh, uh i mean uh ai i mean having the deep knowledge of uh, how to use machine learning how to develop neural networks that would benefit much better i can tell you that for example just to give you an idea because you, how old are you we need 37 27 37 37 37 37 so for example in rta in dubai for example a data scientist sometimes is paid more than a project manager so sometimes is paid more than his boss so a, a job of 10 12 fifteen thousand dollars for a data scientist even of 30 years old uh with the six seven years experience is normal so data science job is a uh, uh really something on the rise it's, it's very difficult to find good data scientists with good technical background even harder but this is my personal views is uh, to to find a project manager that knows how to work with data scientists and that's oh. what i do oh. because because uh, i can tell you uh when we started the project with rta there were 10 data scientists it was a two years project and they were one year behind oh. uh, so it's important to have data scientists but it's also very important to have uh, most of the skills that the older folks in this uh in this probably uh um webinar have project management skill how to make it happen how to have all these people together no mm -hmm. so that is still very extremely relevant in the business so Vinit, i'll give you uh, rafael's contact you can book a calendar. He accepts payments mostly in US dir in dirhams, uh, not in dollars. Uh, uh, Rafael, you want uh, what euros or dollars or what do you need? Anything, even Indian rupee. <laughs> Actually, I prefer Indian rupee because it's multiplied by seventy-five. So I can say my wife has it. There is a billion kind of thing. I don't even know the currency. A billion coming, <laughs> and she thinks that we are very rich. <laughs> but please allow me How to ask this one extension. Okay, that's it. Yes, please, please. So NLP, please, are please. you saying that it is related to chatbot only? Natural. You are talking about natural language processing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mostly yes. This is where we use it. This chatbot. actually for two years uh, I was uh, the uh, managing director of uh, this startup Querlo. Uh, I, I, you can see my profile. Uh, we actually created a, a, a graphical workflow to make chatbot. Oh. Um, we, we were quite the first. We started five years ago. Oh, great. great. Uh, but, uh, we grew a company to a certain level, but the main problem is that the main investor was already very rich, so he didn't have big appetite to grow more. That's why I left. Oh. Vishwajit is from so the much. realist. So uh, Vishwajit has a question. Yes, I don't know how relevant it is. I think many times for new companies or startup, they don't have their own data and they tend to buy data from the market, from so-called professional agencies which sell the data. So for example? How, for example, there are certain agencies which will, you, which will give you the data of customers whom you will send SMS or WhatsApp messages and try to entice them to... I, I, am, a, I am a much more nasty than that. <laughs> I, one of my startup is uh, uh, an online commerce uh, for, uh, for restaurants, okay? So I'm actually using this tool, uh, it's called the Web Scraper, okay? Uh, that could, uh, I show you with a second, it should be here. I wanna show you because it's pretty cool. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Mm -hmm. Roswald, I'll introduce you because when you go to Dubai, you can talk to Rafael. Yes, yes. Yeah. Rafael, I'll show you later. But anyway, but anyway, this is a, a, it's a data scraper. So there is a tool. It's called this one. It's open web scraper. It's magical. And uh, yeah, it provides me the list of 4,000 restaurants with the, with the name and phone number across uh, UAE. So there are a lot of tools right now that you can use and they are free and they can provide you uh all sort of information there is another tool for example this tool 
this is not so cheap, but if, for example, let's say that I want to, you know, I want to sell a product similar to Zendesk, right? That is better. I believe that is better than Zendesk. This tool can tell me the list of all the companies that are using Zendesk, right? So you, I can get the list, all of them. You see, this is the countries where Zendesk is operating. And then from this tool, then I can also have the email of the employees working in those companies. So what about selling them something like, oh, I see that you're using Zendesk, but uh, I have created another company called Mumbai Desk, uh, which provides a product that is better. And then, you know, in, in one second, you have something free, but you have uh, thousands of potential customers for your company. Yes, yes. Good. Thank you so okay. much. So uh, you're welcome. To sip and save, I, I sip and save. What's your name here? Wait one second, yeah. You should put in your Priyesh. Priyesh, yeah, Priyesh, can I? You have your video, please. Don't worry if you're not shaved or something. It's not a problem. Yeah, it's okay. You're looking good. I uh, believe that every every startup should mandatory hire. A, a, an Indian kid from 25 to 30 years old who has on LinkedIn the name Grow Hacker. Okay. You should hire this guy, you should hire this kid, treat him very nicely and tell him, that's my problem, please help me. And I'm sure that that kid would solve the problem. Great. Okay. That's my person. You had a question, no, please? Yeah. So I, I just wanted to understand from you. Could you, uh, just, uh, could you just introduce yourself first? Uh, yeah, so. I'm, I'm Priyesh. Uh, I run a startup called a Sip and Swap. Uh, it's an app which rewards people for not using their phone. Uh, so we're in the very early stage. Ah, why? Wow. And I, I, I heard about, I don't know if it's the same company, I heard about a similar company in the UAE. Okay. Are no, you aware? I'm, no, I'm not sure. I, I haven't come across any company in UAE yet. But I'll check them out, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the idea is to take people offline and reward them for uh, not using their phone so they can be more productive and less distracted from notifications from Facebook or uh, any other. So if they, if, they use, if they use a lot their phone and then uh, you, uh, you can reward them more if they stop. Right, right, right. The longer so I, I can become very rich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> So my uh, so since right now we're in a customer acquisition zone, uh, I wanted to understand which are the best platforms to for one retargeting and for customer acquisition. If I'm doing paid ads and you know building data through those channels, you are a B two C or it's a B two C or B two B. It's a B two B two C. So our rewards and all of those are aligned for brands, but the uh, it's primarily meant for consumers to use it. But okay, the, the, but this is a service that you're gonna sell to brands. So I have a company and my employee, they're all the time on their phone. And then I'm going to get this service from your company so that my employee would use their social less. Yes. So primarily we are putting it out as a consumer product first. Then we'll figure out the enterprise part of uh, taking it to brands and corporates. Hey, wonderful. I mean, uh, I hate to say that, but if it's a consumer product, you still uh, have to go to a company that I really hate, is it, which is Facebook. So I believe that despite having a lot of fake stuff, etc., for consumer, Facebook and Instagram, they're still uh, quite a good platform. I can see now, for example, company like TikTok is on the rise. In the UAE, there is already people with the with the with the million of with the with the, with the million of users, and especially they have a lot of very very young young users. So uh, if I mean, if I were you. Starting from consumer, I would start to focus on probably even TikTok even better than Facebook. And uh, still, the organic reach is pretty good okay. there. There is a lot of kids, uh, people, they post. And uh, I would also suggest to use an uh, influencer on TikTok. Right. There is already some, some, some influencer on the rise uh, that because on TikTok, there is still not a lot of money of advertising. So those kind of people, you can have them with a little money. Right, so if you go to a YouTube influencer or Facebook influencer, this is gonna cost you a lot of money or Instagram because there is the big advertising money. But on TikTok, it's just the beginning. There is people who have a lot of followers on TikTok and they have nobody in Facebook. Right. So the, you are you don't have competition. So if you can speak with some of them, that I think would be great. And I believe that 
uh, you also have to uh, make the narrative of your brand very straight. So why you want to do this? What is the purpose? So give a give a give an higher meaning to your company, which I believe it has, because all people now they are addicted. I find myself with my wife next to me. I'm not talking to her, and I'm with this phone all the time. So uh, there, there is there is really a social mission to be achieved. Yes, that's exactly the problem in the area uh, we are trying to solve into. Uh, and we did try with influencers on uh, Instagram with micro influencers, and that did get us uh, attention for like 500,000 downloads. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely look into TikTok as a platform. But at the same time, do you think Google uh, ads uh, are helpful for an app, or social platforms would be the best? I am. I am. Uh... I am not a big fan of Google for those kind of apps. So we have to search. Have you have you done a keyword search to see how many people are searching for this kind of application on Google? Because uh, that is the that is the start. When I sell digital marketing to the customer, when I do a quotation, I have now three CEO uh, potential customer this week. The thing that I do when I start talking about their business and I want to propose myself as a consultant. So if you were my customer. I do for you a quotation. The first slide that you see of my quotation is how many people are searching for your product online in your region? Is there something very simple that you can do? You can see even the trend for the last two years, it's mm-hmm. free. You can see it's 10,000 people, it's 20,000 people. So you understand if it's 300 people, then there is a problem. But if you understand the key, the, the, the most important keyword for your application, how many they are, if it's 20, 30, 40,000 people, it means that there is a demand. It means that there are people on Google that are searching for that kind of application. Right. Got it. That helps a lot. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who else is there? Somebody. Prasanna, you don't have any questions. You are a web guy, yeah? <clears throat> so ask Marathi Achan. Okay, uh, so before Suhas yeah. was, the, uh, no, Jitesh was before you, others he'll use that concrete mixer to run me down. Okay, Jitesh, over to you. Rafael, it's a like, weird question. Then I just wanted to ask, uh, like, say if a person starts from zero, like how much time would he take to uh, get to a data scientist level? Say like, I'm a person with, assuming my person, me, like I'm a person with no IT or computer science background. So you say, if I want to start, how much time will it take? Uh, With a a decent grasping power, obviously I understand that's a factor. So decent grasping power. I mean, starting from zero IT background. Just keep it here. Zero IT and technical background. Yes, zero IT technical oh, yeah. ba- background. Okay. Heck, I would say quite some time. Uh, I mean, especially if you're talking about data scientists. Uh, so actually data scientist role, uh, I am a telecommunication engineer. I mm-hmm. didn't know that there was something called data scientist when I was a telecommunication engineer. Mm-hmm. But actually all the math that you study in, in the engineering education or math, uh, vectors, uh, uh, probability theory, yes, 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 but even beyond that, it's mm-hmm. actually uh, very important in, 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 for a data scientist. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have that theory background, it's going to be very, very hard. I recently, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I see new training, new stuff around data scientists, and it all really comes to the math. So I believe that if you are really extremely motivated, you start from zero, uh, you need a seriously at least one or two serious area e- year to have also to have the math right to understand the math right. So I'm a mechanical engineer. But by, by, by Jitesh, hello, hello, Jitesh, Jitesh, Jitesh. Hmm? We'll go into this uh, animated discussions later. So no, you, can, is, yeah. you can. Yeah, this you is can. something serious because I'm yeah. talking yeah. about career yeah, yeah. transformation. So, no, no, you can. Jitesh, you can, yeah. carry, Jitesh carry I can share with you later a link sure. of a of a training that I found very good, mm-hmm. and you can do that one. And I think if you already have a, a, a an engineering background, I think that that could really work. So then, of course, the the amount goes to uh, some months, five six months, I would say. Okay. Or maybe I should have mailed to you if you can sharing the purpose. Why yeah, not? Why not? Of okay. course. Do that. 
Okay. Uh, we have Harsh Gurka who is there. Harsh, is your video not working or what? I mean. Harsh, is it? Ah, maybe, yeah. maybe he had a very nice pyjama and he didn't want to disclose the pyjama with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hi, Harsh, how are you? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm good. How Your mic is off, Harsh. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I can, uh, you can, can come closer to the microphone. Like, we can mm -hmm. hear you that much. Hello. Yeah. Yes, now yes. Yeah, 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 I'm good. Yeah. Okay, he's good. Suhas had a question. Suhas is a common question or is it uh, uh, something related? Uh, no, no, I don't have a question actually. My questions are answered by a uh, few of them who have answered. Okay, great. great. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yes, yeah, Suhas, over to your last question before we go into breakout rooms. Yeah, good evening, Rafael. In all this uh, half an hour or 45 minutes, you have given me a wonderful tip how you pitch yourself to the customers. Thank you for that. Great. Okay. Marishi, last question. Yeah. Uh, Raf, just one thing, you know, uh, you shed a lot on data, uh, it was pretty helpful, I am just, uh, right now while we were in the session, I just checked web scrapper, it was something new for us, so I was just going around, so I realized the tool is pretty good, so, uh, you know, just a question that one tool, which uh, you mentioned, you know, the age group of 25 to 30, I am 27, so, you know, I something which can uh, help a basic entrepreneur, not that technical, but at the same time, it, it shall be of use to everybody, which can be used. Is there any such tool which can be utilized or something that every business should use, which would help them? I mean, it's a pretty basic, but uh, I can see some businesses working uh, with Excel, not even having a CRM. So I think it's CRM, a basic CRM, and I, I believe that there is some of you who are in the business of CRM and call center, etc., that really helps to track the information with the customers. Yes. Who is talking with whose customers? Basic data and information taking. Uh, trust me, a startup is a pretty crazy. I speak with a customer and I send him an email, and then I found out my associate called him five minutes before, and it's not tracing the CRM. So it's very bad from the point of view of the customer. You know, uh, they, they mistrust you. They feel these guys, they don't communicate to each other. So the CRM is really the basic tool. And some, and some of them, they, they, they are free and not even that expensive. The second biggest investment, as I, as I told you, is a, to identify grow hacker. Someone, it can be your friend in the college, someone on LinkedIn. India, you are so lucky because there is plenty of those people. The, young, the younger generation of uh, Indian guys, it's fantastic. You have a lot of guys, uh, young, uh, very talented, and those are the people that reward because those kind of techniques that I show, trust me, they take a lot of time to be perfectionate. So if you as an entrepreneur, you spend the most of your time there, then you don't have time for anything else. So if you can find a guy in the company who is particularly related to that kind of tools, automation, web scraping, taking the data, setting up those things. That is really the gold mine for a startup. I will not start any startup without having someone with that skill. Thanks. 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 It's the best event.